So thank you very much, John. Uh, let's start. It. Could you tell us about your background and how you got involved in AES? Um, I can. Uh, let me see. I was the young junior faculty member uh, in a department of much smarter, more accomplished people. And my department chair said, John, we're going to start a, a AES student section at our college, and you are going to be the faculty advisor. And I thought, oh, shit. I caramba. This is going to be the worst thing that ever happened to me because this is an organization that has a peer review journal that that publishes standards for technical interoperability that has technical committees uh, and really drives uh, all the technical aspects of the audio industry. And they're going to figure out that I don't know enough and I'm going to be discovered as a terrible fraud. And so um, I was really concerned. I thought this would this would be the the end of me. And what I did was I ended up just inviting interesting people to come talk with students. And I made it a very social thing. I would always have food. And the first person I invited was my friend Don Palouse, who had recorded the band Sly and the Family Stone and Jaco Pistorius and the band Chicago. And he was a, a brilliant uh, audio engineer for CBS Records and uh, back in the 1960s and 70s. And... Um, Don came and he spoke about his career and it was just fabulous. And then I had, uh, I had um, someone come and we made wax cylinder recordings. I had someone else come. Uh, it was a it was a a company that had three employees and they came and they talked about how you could use their software. Just you could you could master audio entirely with their software. In the box, this is like 2003, and I thought, like, you know, that sounds a little crazy. Doesn't sound like real mastering. Most people were kind of uh, not convinced, and they thought it was, you know, they kind of snickered, and they thought, this is not really mastering. Uh, that company was Isotope. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so uh, that was really interesting. And I had all kinds of great things. Uh, I got... Uh, I was just having all these great events with the Audio Engineering Society co-curricular. It helped put my college on the map. Um, and uh, I would go to the AES conventions and um, they, I was asked if I would be part of the AES Education Committee, which I thought was just fabulous. And then I started doing this event in Boston called the Boston Area Definitive Audio Student Summit, otherwise known as Badass, Boston Area Definitive Audio Student Summit. And I would uh, have about four to 500 college audio students and professors and, and people in the industry. And it would be like a miniature soundcheck expo uh, or AES convention with workshops and tutorials and all kinds of great things. And, um, uh, we would, uh, you know, it was, it, it was a pretty nice success. You know, it was like, it was designed to really get students interested in getting involved in these kinds of communities, um, and understanding how to talk to people and understanding how the industry worked. And then, um, the, uh, uh, I was asked by the incoming president of AES, if I would be a vice chair of the AES Education Committee. And then uh, another president asked me if I would be the, the chair of the AES Education Committee. And I loved meeting professors. I loved meeting educators and talking about how we were delivering content about audio in education to students. Um, I was asked if I would run for president of the Audio Engineering Society, and I won an election. I became the president in 2015 and 2016. Um, I really like building community. 
And I love all the people. I love the fact that it gets me to Mexico and I get to, I have all these great friends in Mexico and I have all these great friends in other countries. Um, and so for me, it's really been a lot about building community. Um, uh, so uh, I'm still very interested in AES, and uh, I was asked after I was president, I was asked if I would chair two conferences at the U United States Library of Congress. I chaired the 2018 and 2023 conferences on uh, audio archiving, preservation, and restoration, um, which is remarkable because I'm not a big expert in those fields. Um, but I know all the great experts that are involved with the Audio Engineering Society. So I invited them uh, to be part of this, uh, you know, part of this committee and put on some great events that uh, push forward the science of, and practice of audio archiving, preservation and restoration, and raise some important money for the Audio Engineering Society. I've also chaired uh, two conferences for the AES on high school audio education. And um, I think that that was also very helpful in bringing high school educators to into the Audio Engineering Society. And I'll always be a huge fan of AES. And I, I will say to anybody that the best thing I ever did in my career was become a member of the Audio Engineering Society. Wow. Yeah, we can see in on these years as Past president, I remember your work, and believe me, when I see your uh, work, I'm really surprised because I say, wow, uh, we need this. And this is the second um, change for me because it's a great opportunity for students, uh, academic, I don't know, it's a big, big opportunity. So. Yeah. What is the importance of AES worldwide? I mean, the AES does some uh, important things that it, it publishes a peer reviewed journal, um, academic articles about research uh, in audio. Um, it uh, it uh, executes standards for technical interoperability so that this tape machine can talk to this computer and 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 packets of information go up and down based on standards that happen from the AES. Um, uh, I think it it the most important thing for me is that it builds community. That it's a community of like minded professionals, students, educators, researchers who uh, who are seeking a place to really sort of uh, exchange ideas to learn. Uh, to, uh, to, you know, if somebody is interested in a certain kind of technology, let's say automotive audio, well, the, 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 the most accomplished, uh, practitioners of automotive audio are involved in the, the audio engineering society. Uh, usually every maybe two or three or four years, there's a conference on automotive audio where, uh, the greatest research is exchanged and and really if that's something that you're cur curious about and something that you want to be involved in that's where you will meet all of the people who are doing that kind of uh, research and work okay for example in old days uh, the only literal research um the discovery is in uh, records we can see the credits and recording engineer, tracking, I don't know. So on these days with AES um, and the all the modern era, how this networking comes about with Eventide, Ibermaker, Empirical Labs, Isotope, all the work that you are with all so, of them. So I learned a great deal from working with AES. I learned how to be a great, um, I think I learned how to be a good communicator. I think I learned the value of, of community. And so even beyond my work with the AES, uh, what I'm, I, I'm, you know, for AES is a volunteer organization, but, uh, the work that I do, I'm a, a senior affiliated faculty at Emerson college in Boston, where 
I've been teaching students, mostly who are interested in film, film and television, uh, audio technology. Um, but I also do some private work, some consulting with a number of different companies. Uh, this has nothing to do with the Audio Engineering Society. But what I do is I work for an, uh, for a, a number of interesting companies. Um, you mentioned some of them. Um, and and we have conversations about uh, curriculum and pedagogy as it relates to specific technologies. So for instance, a company like Eventide makes something really fascinating called Split EQ that they've developed. And it kind of takes the concept of a parametric equalizer to another level. Uh, all of a sudden, you know, if we think about a parametric parametric equalizer we can we can dial in a center frequency we can boost we can cut we can widen or narrow the bandwidth now all of a sudden within that bandwidth we can um uh separate the transients from what they call the tonal so we can go up with one and down with the other or the other way or and it has great implications uh not just the way we can manipulate audio but also i would say uh it informs how teachers teach in the classroom. How would a teacher, how would a professor incorporate something like that in the classroom? Now, uh, a, a regular audio engineer just looks at a piece of signal processing gear and 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 uses it until uh, it they achieve the sound that they want. An educator takes that one step forward and thinks, how can I use this signal processor to teach a larger subject or a larger topic to my students? And that's really how I engage groups of professors. Uh, I do this for companies like Eventide and other companies. Um, and uh, I what I found is that bringing together small groups of professors, of educators with developers all kinds of great ideas come out and um the companies that i work for are very happy because they they really like to be engaged with the professors yeah yeah and it's a a big work because you know the all days they give me touch gear uh, analog tape but in the new era or digital era, it's very important all these plugins, software. So yeah. this is an opportunity for them. Yes. Well, there are there are new things like uh, I'm doing some work for a company called OIC Sound from Helsinki, Finland. Uh, they contacted me, and uh, you know, I found out that they were making something called Soothe Two, a dynamic uh resonance suppressor uh and i'm thinking hmm do we really need that is that something that's worthwhile um i put something up on my facebook group hey audio student who is using this and i was amazed at the big name uh engineers and producers who responded and said that they're using it on their uh hit records uh alan myerson who does who mixes all the disney movies uh commented it's on every mix so i'm thinking how how are educators not talking about something like soothe to in their classes to their students when it is so ubiquitous on hit records and disney movies wow okay <laughs> so i think what i'm doing is i'm i'm trying to make this connection yeah. um between uh the companies and the professors i think that the professors have a great deal of input that they can share uh you know and um and maybe can help the the developers really understand better some of the uses that's what i'm finding out that um that the educators sort of see some of these um these tools in a way different than maybe they were originally intended. Yeah, uh, this is my next question. Uh, as educators, what would you recommend to all schools, managers, mentors, colleagues who are preparing the new generations? How how can we prepare the, the future generations? Um, well, that's a great question. 
Um, I'm not certain uh, I'm even the most qualified person to answer that. But uh, one thing I would say is in audio, I feel like I'm a fraud if I'm not talking to my students about the economy of audio. You know, so many students come matriculate into a program at 17, 18, 19 years old thinking, you know what, my favorite thing in the world is to make beats with FL Studio. That's what I want to do. I, I could do that all day. But um, maybe that's, you know, the question is, is that something that you might be able to do as a sustainable career? Maybe. But um, there are other kinds of things. And so I feel like um, uh, letting students understand the, the, the breadth of, of different kinds of careers, of things you could do with an audio degree are very important. Um, I know you, you are familiar. I don't know if everyone is familiar, but I have a, a Facebook group that I've been running for 10 years. It's called Hey Audio Student. And it is, uh, it's got about 71,000 members, active members, and it gets about a million views every, every, uh, every 60 days. And, um, this, this, um, in this group, uh, I post a lot of job leads. Yeah. And it's not so much that someone's going to move out of Mexico or they're going to move out of Boston or wherever they are, but you might see a job in Singapore or you might see a job in Denmark and think, oh, geez, I wonder if there's something like that in, I wonder if there's something like that in, in Mexico, or I could go to a company and say, I'd like to do this for you. Um, so I think you know, for instance, a lot of my students will show up interested in making music and they might realize, you know what, I can do, I can make a lot more money if I do audio for sports, for okay. sports podcasts. And so they get into, you know, working uh, radio frequency microphones for for HBO boxing or NFL football or for baseball or, you know, on Fox or or uh, NASCAR racing and all kinds of things that are that they find really interesting and rewarding and sustainable. And there's a whole economy of dollars that can help pay their salaries. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For example, for the new students or future students, as a student, what can I expect from AES? Well, what I would say is that when you're young, this is a, a misconception. People think, oh, I, I need to know something. I need to say something. You know, I'm gonna see George Massenberg at Soundcheck Expo. I need to say something so brilliant that he's gonna wanna hire me and make me help mix his next record. And the truth is, there's probably nothing that you can say. What's gonna impress someone like George Massenberg or me or you is curiosity. So I think if you ask lots of questions uh, and you you're sincere in your interest in audio and you can convey that, you don't have to have the answers, but you have to know the questions to ask. So, hey, I don't know everything about um, optical uh, imaging of discs, but I know these people. And I'm going to ask them lots of questions. And if you can find your AES is that place where all those great questions can be answered and all the experts are there. So if you go to something like the, the conference on audio archiving, and that's something that you're interested in, all those experts are there. And if they see some young person who's curious and hardworking and industrious enough to get their ass to the Library of Congress, they think that's, our, that's the next person we're going to hire. Okay. <laughs> yeah, thank you. John, uh, do you have any philosophy in your way of working? Philosophy in the way of working? Um, uh, yeah, I think my philosophy is um, there's always someone smarter than me. There's always someone more talented than me. Uh, there's always someone better looking than me. 
Um, so I'm just going to have to work harder than everybody else. So that's it. I just, I just work harder than everybody else. Okay. <laughs> okay. This is very, very interesting. Okay, John, um, this is uh, about Soundcheck Expo. Yeah. Um, what comes to you in your mind when you listen Soundcheck Expo? How was your first time here in Mexico? How do you describe, how could you describe the ambient about Soundcheck Expo? But what does it mean for you? Oh, you know what? It's the greatest people. Um, I'm, uh, you know, my beloved friend, Jorge Urbano. Um, uh, I see you. I see Pancho Miranda. I see Umberto Turan. I see, uh, you know, just all these fabulous friends, um, these smart, kind, uh, wonderful people that I just in really enjoy Uh, seeing um, the the spirit of this thing is incredible. The people in Mexico really know how to welcome uh, people. Everyone who I've ever, I've never met anyone who didn't have the greatest time at Soundcheck Expo. It is, uh, and this is not hyper, hyperbole, it's the best event in the world. It is the best audio event I've ever been to. Uh, I've been to a, a bunch of them since 2015, 2015. Yeah. 2015. And, um, I'm never going to miss one. It's just, it's just great. I feel like, you know, the opening ceremonies are so exciting, uh, and so much fun. And then marching up and down the aisles of the trade show with a, with a huge mariachi band, no other conference does that. That's incredible. Uh, the, the, um, the conferences are wonderful. Um, the, the, uh, you know, there's so many interesting people to meet. Uh, um, I think that what I'd really like is for more companies from the United States and Europe to come to Soundcheck Expo, uh, to think about um, expanding their business to Latin America. Um, and I think that this is the gateway. This is the place where um, they should be. So I, I'd like to bring more educators to Soundcheck Expo. I think that it's a, it's a very, Mexico City is very, um, it's very reasonable to find a nice hotel for not that much money for a fraction of what it would cost in New York or Los Angeles or Las Vegas. Um, I think that, uh, uh, people would have a great time. The food is outstanding. The people are outstanding. Uh, the knowledge is, 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 is just fantastic. And, um, I I'll never miss Soundcheck Expo. It's my favorite thing. <laughs> thanks. Thanks. It is, it's a big place. No. Yeah, it's, it's... Um, I, I'm very excited. This year, there are uh, incredible um, guests that that are coming down with me. Uh, George Massenberg uh, is is probably, I think, the most accomplished person in audio. He's a gold medal winner of the Audio Engineering Society. Uh, you know, in audio, there are so many different things that people do to be distinguished. They are great educators. They have invented things. They produced good records. They produced hit records. They produced best-selling records. Uh, they've, uh, they've, um, Uh, designed hardware, they've designed software, they've run companies, uh, they are uh, outstanding educators. Uh, George is the one person who checks every box. He's done all of those things. Uh, he did, he recorded September by Earth, Wind and Fire, uh, Linda Ronstadt's mariachi music, just incredible stuff. Um, I'm also bringing down Leslie Ann Jones, who runs Skywalker Sound, uh, who is incredible, you know, just, just this uh, incredibly well-respected uh, uh, audio professional. Uh, Rafa Sardina, 
who wins every Latin Grammy. Everyone loves Rafa Sardina. He's he's just uh, fantastic, and he's going to bring some multi tracks with him. Uh, I'm bringing down uh, Michael Romanowski for the second year in a row. Michael Romanowski, to get this, he is he. There are five pieces of music that are nominated for best immersive record. Michael was nominated for four of the five uh, and he won again. And he's fabulous. He is so smart um, and he is so kind and well-spoken. And uh, we're going to be doing something with the Neumann Immersive Audio Educators Advisory Group where professors are going to join us and we're going to talk about the process of implementing uh, immersive audio into program curriculums. Are we calibrating correctly? Are we teaching the right things? Are we preparing students correctly for immersive careers? Um, are we uh, choosing the right formats for what we're teaching? Um, there are so many questions that are, you know, in this very new and nascent uh, field. And um, uh, I'm really looking forward to having having him down. And I'm bringing friends from Avid and uh, and uh, Apogee and Antelope Audio and Oratone and uh, Wave Distro and Little Labs and Empirical Labs. Uh, lots of friends who are going to be with us and. Um, and some coming for their first time to Soundcheck Expo. And I think that they're going to have a great time. It's going to yeah. be a lot. It's a 20 anniversary, the 20th edition. Yeah. It's, it, it's the best event in the world. Yeah. El Campeón del Mundo. Muchas gracias. <laughs> Así es. The last two questions, John, please. Uh, how do you see the music industry? In our times, is it just a long, strange days, or what's your opinion about this moment? <laughs> well, I'm not a great uh, expert in the music industry. I think uh, I'm probably better better suited to talk about the audio industry. I think that um, we're going to have some challenges with um, with artificial intelligence. There's some incredible possibilities. I'm working with a company called. Dream Tonics in Japan that is doing some fabulous things um, that I think will will help songwriters. Um, but but there are challenges. If put in the wrong hands, it could it could do some evil things. Um, so uh, that's kind of interesting. I think you know we've had this in the last. 40 or 50 years, we've had this switch between uh, live the live sound field that seems to be doing pretty well and the recorded sound that is maybe not as valued as it once was. Um, I don't know. It's changing what it is to be a musician. Um, but I think, you know, is music going to go away? No, of course not. We're always going to love music. Yeah. It's always important. Yeah, so the, the the key is we live in big challenge, as you say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you, thank you very much, John. Uh, can you uh, talk any advice for the new generations, for educators, or something like that, for finish this interview? Sure. Well, educators, if I haven't met you, I want to meet you. Um, I love working with educators and connecting them with companies. Um, so if we haven't met, please send me an email or, or connect with me through Facebook. Uh, I, if you want to know what I'm up to, uh, check out my, my Facebook group called Hey Audio Student. Um, it's got lots of uh, really brilliant people there who know a lot more about audio than I do. Um, and um, uh, I, you know, again, I'm all about community. I want you to be part of my community. So, so um, 
I hope to see you at Soundcheck Expo. If if uh, if we haven't met, please please come say hello and give me your business card and and um, and uh, you know we'll stay connected, um, Mikael. Uh, it's always great to see you and to talk with you. And I'm so appreciative of all that you do for uh, the audio community in Mexico and beyond. And um, it's always great to talk with you. It's a great pleasure too. Thank you very much, John, for your time. And I hope to see you here. We can eat uh, tacos, uh, drink, I don't know. <laughs> and talk Sounds about good. Food. That sounds good. Thank you very Thank much, John. You. Thank you. Thank you. We finished. <laughs>